man. Oh, I'm so glad that is done. I've never been so glad to be done with a portage than I am right now. And I don't know what the rest of the day has in store for us. I know we got another big portage coming right up, but it can't be as bad as this one was. Coming out of this little, I don't know what you call this, I guess it's just a stream. We're gonna hit the Detroits, we're gonna get blasted with current. Turn around and just go. In the summer of 2019, my dad and his uncle left town on a great adventure in an open canoe to cross the province of Quebec from Hudson to Ungava Bay. Along the way, they followed a historic route used by our ancestors for centuries as a way of moving from one side of the Angava Peninsula to the other. They didn't do it for any particular reason, I think, and I only remember that they were gone for a long time. 500 or so kilometers into the trip, they suffered an unfortunate injury and were airlifted out of the wilderness, leaving Dad's wood canvas canoe behind. Dad obsessed all winter about that abandoned canoe, and when the virus swept across Canada and shut down all access to northern Quebec, he saw an opportunity and an excuse to make the rugged journey again in an attempt to retrieve it. This time he took us with him, despite the fact that he was not sure if we could physically make it or not. Well, we made it all right. We were gone a long time, and we made a lot of stories. This is one of them. Dad, isn't this dangerous? Yeah. It's not good for my back. It's the only way. Georgie, hmm? hold the front of the canoe down, can you? The very front, hold it down. Can you pull on it? You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, don't let go. Good job. All right, we got it. Okay. Ah. All right. It's still... That was the job I've been stressed about. I remember this hill. But we're on the top of it now. We're going through the woods now. Before, it's just like two minute path over there with no bushes, no trees. Now, we're in the trees and bushes. <sighs> and it's hotter in here. More bugs. And just like a cloud of flies are surrounding the canoe. I don't think you can see it. Oh, man. Dad, there's bear poop. Looks fresh. There it, there's bear poop and it looks fresh. Here, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap. We are almost to the top. We are all very sweaty. Dad says he needs a bath. I'm not sweaty. I'll show you a pretty rock that I'm gonna give mom. Just wait. <laughs> um, so we're almost to the top. Dad needs a bath or a shower and look um 
We all need one, but Dad mostly needs one. He's so sweaty he can't move. So sweaty and sticky. That's what he said. Ooh, okay, we reached the Clearwater River last night, and I wish I could say that it was a celebratory mood, but it wasn't. The girls are grumpy. We're all tired. The weather hasn't been great. It's been real windy. We've been fighting headwinds for four days. I haven't been filming much. Uh, the GoPro is running out of memory card space already, um, and my Sony camera just feels so cumbersome. Not to mention that it just hasn't been a priority. I mean, by the time I get to camp, take care of the girls, set up the tent, get the firewood, make the fire, cook dinner, have my tea, ugh, I'm exhausted. So I guess those are excuses, but that's what's happening. So Clearwater River, we have hopefully three days or four days of paddling to the cabin. We'll reach our food supply. I've been here before. When I was here last year with my uncle, we rolled a big fat cigarette and smoked it to celebrate the fact that we were here. And uh, the year before that, when I got here, I really wanted to camp. And I saw this wood pile that's still here. So I've been looking at this wood pile for the past four or five years that I've been coming through here. And I never burned it. I don't know. It looks like a nice little wood pile that someone left, but I just never got around to burning it. And it's actually not as crisp and new as it was four years ago, so I don't think it's been there that long. Anyway, this is an established campsite. There's the river over there. That's where we're heading upstream. We got 26 kilometers to go to the big lake. Um, where, are we? where are we, Georgie? Clearwater River. Oh, I thought we were on Clearwater Lake. We wish we were on Clearwater Lake. We will be soon. Uh, also, I lost my mug yesterday, which was a blow. So now we only have two mugs I'm sharing with Georgie. And it, it just kind of has put me in a mood where I don't feel like doing a lot of happy things. But I'm sure I'll get over it, like I always do. Um, Dad, what happened? Uh, I don't know. I think your toothbrush is getting old. All right, so let's pack up and get out of here. How is my toothbrush getting old? I don't know. Yeah, we're all ready to go. The kids are in the tent all dressed up. But... Nothing, nothing is routine for them yet. So a strong gust of wind or a funny current that pushes us in a, in a bad direction or a rainstorm, all, all those things become a big deal. And until they get used to it, it's a little bit traumatic. Uh, yesterday we had a little spot where they had to get out of the canoe real fast in some strong current and they didn't like it. I didn't like it either, frankly. So, my instinct is telling me to slow down but my food bag is telling me to hurry up. We found a frog and we got to keep him. And then Reagan let him go. Into Clearwater River. And now we're on Clearwater Lake. Right, Dad? Yep. We finally made it to the lake. And I'm very, very proud of you guys. You guys went from Richmond Gulf Clearwater Lake by canoe, upstream through the mountains. You braved the heat, the wind, the bugs, and the thunderstorms. And here we are. And this little section here is rough. I don't know what we're gonna do, guys. Oh, looking so great here. We 
We've been paddling here all night. We were supposed to have dinner on the, the camp stove, but it failed. I don't know why. So we had to make an emergency fire, which is not great, but it's better than having cold dinner. So the plan is to cross this lake tonight and get to the cabin in our food stash early in the morning. That's the plan. All right, so it is five o'clock in the morning. We started paddling yesterday at eight o'clock in the morning. So I've been in the canoe, all well, the three of us have been in the canoe for the past 21 hours. We did do a couple portages, but 21 hours. And we are just rounding the final corner to the cabin where our food stash is. And we are gonna find out if the food held out for the five or six weeks that it's been here. We're gonna find out if any bears got in there, if any mice got in there, any insects. Uh, and if the food box is intact, that's great. And if it's not, then our trip's gonna end early because we definitely don't have enough food to get to Kujuak right now. So, 21 hours of paddling. I'm done. I wanna be done, I wanna be out of this boat. I wanna be on land. I wanna stretch my back, my back is killing me. My face is on fire because the mosquitoes have been literally chewing me alive since about midnight. We had dinner on the beach. The camp stove broke. All kinds of monkey wrench things got tossed our way. Yeah. Monkey wrench things? Yeah. <laughs> All right, over and out. We are making the walk up to the cabin. George is very excited. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out right now if, if our food made it. It's actually a big moment of the trip. I've never done a trip with a resupply in my life. Uh, but, and I don't, I never liked it or I don't, I'm not proud or I don't know, whatever. I don't know how I feel about that, but uh, how do I feel about that? I prefer trips that are, that keep you self-sufficient the whole way. But with two kids and, you know, the scale or scope of this trip, uh, I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel bad. There's not much in that box anyway that is going to be too exciting. What? Um, do you see that C mark? Yeah. Um, that's what Ariel has on her house. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's how I know which house is Ariel's. Yeah, is this Ariel's house here? No. No. You know the Ariel in my class? Here we are. I am really nervous. Dad, your echo. You hear my echo? Yeah. Come on, girls. <laughs> Somebody knock on the door. <laughs> the mess here. That was At least there's a huge cow. That mess wasn't here last year. Yeah. I saw. Knock on the door, Georgie. Little pig, little pig, let me in.